The broadcast is now starting. <coughs> All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Facebook update training. And today, I actually have a lot of stuff to share with you guys. Now, obviously, before I get started, we still have a lot of people that are logging in and paddling on right now. So obviously, before I start, I want to do some housekeeping item, get to know your guys' name, know who you guys are. So obviously, a lot of people already gave me a one saying they love my writing. Um, yeah, I love that writing, too. It's like I came out, I was like, hmm, it, it looks really, really nice. All right. So anyways, I really want you guys to tell me right in the question box where you guys are from. I always love to do this because it's amazing how technology nowadays really bring us together all around the world into one place right now. So I got Sergio from Mexico. I got Marge from Alberta. I got uh, Joanna from Las Sorinas, Chile. Wow, n n never knew that there's a place called Las Sorina. Would love to visit Chile one day. Um, there's Mike from Spoken right down my right under where I live. Um, there's Germany, there's Mississippi, there is Surrey. Wow, right? Really very close to me, like across the town from me. Um, we got someone from China. Wow, what can, welcome, Wei In Su. Great to have people from <coughs> Asia to be here. I got people from Vegas, New Zealand, Sydney, Iowa. I got St. Louis from Big uh, Paul, Big Paul in St. Louis. That's amazing. I like that, Big Paul. And then I got people from Philippines, Denver. Wow, I got a lot of people around the world. So much that is actually starting to freeze on my screen. That's excellent. I like it when my question box is actually frozen up. Now, again, I do have to give you guys heads up. We have an overwhelming response of people signing up for this workshop. Obviously, in this workshop, I'm not going to pitch you guys anything. I just straight up want to bring value to you guys and to share with you everything that I have been discovering. And I just really want to show you guys and help you guys out. And that's really what my ultimate outcome is going to be. So give me a one in the question box if you guys absolutely love that there is training with no pitch. Just give me a one in the question box. All right. Excellent. And I know that a lot of you guys would definitely appreciate this. Um, and that's why I'm doing this webinar because I haven't done a webinar for quite some time uh, with a lot of people. So um, obviously, I just want to really engage with you guys, tell you guys what has been happening and all those other stuff. Now, on top of that, obviously, we all know right now that at the end of the day, Facebook advertising is definitely something that cannot be ignored. Right now, it's virtual. I can say it's inevitable for any online business right now to not run ads on Facebook. It is the number one core traffic that I am currently using right now. In fact, I'm actually spending more money on Facebook per day than on Google. It's just the way that it is built right now and how well everything is at this stage. Now, again, I do have to say I did hit the record button for those of you who are asking right now. However, I had an incident before where I saved and recorded it and I can't find the file. So please pay really close attention to this workshop and I don't have any presentation. It is completely in raw, so you might find me mumbling on some words and all those other stuff, and I may be a little bit all over the map. And I will be covering some very advanced techniques and strategies inside this workshop, so it may be a little bit over your head, but please try to stay in tune and not zone out as much as possible. And I have not been writing anything yet. Don't worry. I'm just doing, I'm still doing some quick introduction to tell you guys what is happening right now. So before I start, let me ask one pressing question. And I'm pretty sure this is something that has been bugging every single person's mind right now. Who is frustrated about Facebook? Give me a yes right in the question box right now if you guys are frustrated about Facebook. Holy crap. Everyone's giving me like a hell yeah. Yes, 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 yes. And oh, John said not yet. Not frustrated yet, just started. All right, but let me ask you guys this question. How many of you guys have actually noticed that Facebook made some big change? And not just changes alone, but cosmetic change in a way where 
it seems like everything that you've been doing is completely changed. So yes, Bu is right. They even have a fan page change. But at the end of the day, fan page change is not really um, fan page change. Everyone's just giving me huge fan page doesn't really have that much of an effect on your advertising campaign because it's just the looks and the cosmetic of things. However, right now Facebook has been doing a lot of big changes, and there's one thing that you absolutely need to know. And that you firmly need to really put this right in your piece of paper. Now, again, I'm going to be doing、um, this a little bit different. I'm trying to really do more of a、uh, whiteboarding, so you guys can actually we can take notes together. Because I have a lot of people that comment in that say I type way too fast, and they just couldn't take、um, the same amount of notes as they wish because I just type too fast, and I know that. Um, I actually type very very fast, so my apology on that end. So instead, today I'm just gonna do like a whiteboard, and with the whiteboard, what can happen is that I write what you write, so we're all taking notes together. So the first thing that you need to absolutely know that you must understand if you're advertising on Facebook is that Facebook consistently does update consistently. Updates. Now, you may not see these updates like right away or have a drastic change right away, but in their back end, they always actually changes updates. In fact, they update so often on a regular basis that even my Facebook rep and specialist don't even know what is happening. At times, I would have to question him and、I、say, "Hey, I found this.、Um, do you guys have any information about it?" and Luck, stupidly enough, even my Facebook rep said we never actually got any training about it. So the people that are updating Facebook and the people that are representing Facebook to talk to large advertisers like、um, me and the top three percent, they don't even know what is going on. So whenever Facebook has a big change, and this happens all the time, FB always have big changes, and big changes are things that we need to be very very scared of. Small changes are going to be okay. They will do some adjustments in their algorithm, but when a big change happens, like what happened just several weeks ago, it will sabotage a lot of people's campaign. So previously, when you're running a Facebook advertising campaign and it is working well, and suddenly you all of a sudden Facebook has an update and your campaign just completely turned upside down. Now it turned upside down not because of you. Okay, there are two reasons why there are things that turns upside down. Reason number one is that you may be in a glitch, and what I mean by glitch is that when Facebook's trying to update their system, your ad account has not been put into full effect right away. So that is one thing that you need to be concerned of. Another thing to be concerned of is basically the algorithm change. So as we all know, and for anyone that has been following me all the time, I keep telling you the importance of Facebook's algorithm, and Facebook's success really is because of their investment in these algorithm. But they still need to be refining and changing things in the algorithm that they quote unquote think that makes sense and that actually is great. For all the advertisers, now does all the changes reflect into good stuff? I can say no, but at the same time, they're doing their best to do so. And these changes are things that you need to embrace. And when you have these scenarios that happens, so when when a campaign is actually working, and then suddenly you just feel that things just turn haywire. And when that happens, what you need to do is you need to immediately, okay. Immediately pause your entire campaign, and then run a new campaign. So you can use the same ad, same landing page, same everything, same targeting, but you're creating a brand new campaign. What that happens is that when you create a new campaign. It would reset the algorithm itself. So when things turned haywire, 
and uh, because of a change and you create a new campaign, chances are for your campaign to pick back up will be very, very, very high. So these are some very, this is like the first thing on the top of the line that you absolutely got to do and that you really, really need to think of. So people are asking, what is an algorithm? Well, an algorithm is basically a specific, um, how can I say this? It's a specific robot that they create where they analyze the data. And then at the end of the day, what happens is that they would actually serve their ads based on the information that they have. So it's sort of like cloning a campaign can be good too. You can either clone it or create a new campaign. And yes, you want to use the same audience, same everything, and that would be all right. So that's the number one most important thing. Whenever there's a big change, just create a brand new campaign. It looks simple, but a lot of people just doesn't know that all of a sudden you create a new campaign. It just completely changes and it will reset the algorithm right away. Now, people are saying when running a new campaign, when, when running a new one, can we just copy and paste the old one uh, to the new one from scratch? Yes, you can just duplicate it or just create a new one from scratch. All right, you can use everything the same. You're just creating a brand new campaign and that's what you want it to do. Now, on top of that, here's something that I really want to share with you guys is to walk you guys through the new UI. What, what UI really stands for is really the user interface. Now, let me ask you guys this. How many are you guys logged in into your Facebook account one day and all of a sudden see, dang, things have completely changed. Now what? Right inside the UI. Because the way you set up your campaign is very, very different. In fact, what is happening is that the power editor is now having a big change in creating your ads at the same time. Previously, the power editor was so much easier, so much smoother, but they're really putting the power editor and the regular creating ad into the same UI, which I personally, I would have to say, I hate it, but we just have to adapt the change. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna flip to my screen and obviously erase these and really walk you guys through a couple of the key important points and to share with you what these changes are and what you need to be aware of. So first of all, on this page, I just create the uh, click on the create ad and you can see that they have added something new that's get, that basically say get people to visit your stores. Now for anyone that has basically access to Leads Tunnel and by Leads Tunnel, you will see that the regular method on creating lead ad through Power Editor has changed as well. So you would actually have to use the new interface to create your lead ads. So I'll go into lead ad in just a minute, but right now I wanna go into the most important part, which is the marketing objective, right? At the end of the day, we all want to go after increased conversions on your website. We are all people that obviously want to make money online and translate it into an ROI. Give me a one if that's what your intention are, is to use Facebook ad to actually make a positive ROI. Great. So all you guys are giving me a one right now. Amazing. That's basically, that's what I always do is to use Facebook to actually run and make sales back. Now, with that being said, here's one very important thing that you need to be fully aware of. So let's say that now I'm just going after increased conversions on your website, okay? And then I click on continues. So I'll obviously you just want to name your campaign name to uh, whatever you want. I'm just gonna say Fred's demo right now as an example. So you guys can see, I'm obviously not gonna publish this ad. I'm just walking you guys through step-by-step step on what the new UI looks like and what you need to be aware of. So let's say that when you go after increased conversions on your website, okay? If you go after increased conversions on your website and you click continue, then obviously in here, you want to select the conversion event. Now, if you're using Shopify, obviously you can use the Shopify integration and you can choose purchase. And that's what you wanted to do. What you wanted to do is exactly allowing Facebook to tell to help you find people 
that are most likely that will actually trigger the purchase event. Now, let me go into something that's really, really complicated and more in-depth about these conversions and why you need to really pay attention to this, okay? So pay close, close, close attention to what I'm about to share with you guys. So I'm just going to um, get back my whiteboard right here. I'm just going to get back my whiteboard and then, all right, oops. All right, so let me tell you guys this. So we all know about standard events. We all know that obviously what we've just done was we selected purchase pixel. So we're basically telling Facebook that, hey, we want to know what we want. Our ultimate outcome is to basically trigger the purchase pixel. So we basically make an ROI. And that's what you always need to do. You always wanted to go after the conversion, uh, the conversion event of purchase. Now, here's something that you need to be aware of. In Facebook, Facebook actually categorizes every single user in a scale of 1 to 10 and tag it with the conversion event. All right. Let me repeat that again. Facebook, okay, Facebook scales users from 1 to 10 and tag it with standard events. Now you might be wondering, well, what the heck am I talking about, Fred? What, are you, what, what, what do you mean by all these? Let me give you guys an example. Okay, these all work hand in hand. The scale of one to 10, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, I do have to say, I explained this exact methodology to uh, my iPro Lab members, uh, really private close room members, and they, some of the people actually took it and they are actually making a positive ROI right away by doing something called a sweet spot. And I'll explain what this is in just a minute. So now we have a scale of one to 10, right? The ones are basically our grandmas, people that are basically that don't know what they're doing on Facebook. They hardly log on to Facebook and they just randomly click on things, right? Now, when you start moving up the number in your rating, like for myself, I will be in the 10. Facebook will give me as a 10. Now, why Facebook will give me as a 10 is because I actually first click on ads, click add, and I also trigger the event in my account, right? So what it means is that most likely, if I log on to Facebook, I would actually click on an ad, and when I click on an ad, I would visit a landing page. And if the advertiser has installed all their standard event pixels, what will happen is that if I add the product to cart, it will tell Facebook that, hey, this user, Fred Lamb, always add products to his cart. And then when I actually put in my credit card and actually fire the purchase pixel, then Facebook will know that, okay, Fred Lamb always actually click on ads, he always add to cart, and also he always actually buy stuff right off of Facebook. So at that point, I am placed into the scale of a 10 and the purchase pool. Okay, I'm placed into the purchase pool inside Facebook right now. That's where I'm at. So when you actually create a campaign, here's how the things will get into effect. If you start advertising a campaign, and let's say that you're running a $10 a day budget, right? You may potentially only be showing your ads, and I'm going to change this color up. So I can, you guys can see the difference. At ten dollar a day, I may be only having my ads showing to people that are in the scale of one to two, because of my budget. I am not being really aggressive into the market, and my budget cannot even be reflected to go after these big crazy consumers over here. Now it doesn't mean that these people doesn't convert; it still convert, but it may convert at a lesser cost than you actually normally get because of this scaling system. 
the higher you move up the scale, the more you are going to pay. So what I mean by that is, let me change this to another font to red. So let's say that I am doing well at 10 and the scale of one to two is working well for me. Then what happens is that if I increase this budget, let's say all the way to $100 per day, I would normally have my ads shown to the people in the scale of one, two, three, four, five, and six. But when I increase my budget, what it will happen is that your CPM will increase. And when your CPM increases, that means, and your basically your click-through rate um, stay the same, your cost per click will increase at the same time. But does it mean that you are basically losing money? No, it just means that you are reaching a higher quality user inside Facebook. And with that, what will happen is that you may look like you're paying a higher cost per click, but your conversion rate will be higher because you're reaching a much quality um, users right now. But if you start to increase this, let's say to $300 a day, you are potentially going to go into the 10 plus. And when this happens, you are going to be battling and bidding in competition with Fortune 500 companies like Coca-Cola, like all the big dogs over there. So at that point, your cost will start to get very, very expensive. Now, because of these pool and because Facebook actually tracks all the users from view contents to add to cart to initiate checkout to add payment info to purchase, all these actually work hand in hand. Now, obviously right now, every single person are going after the purchase pixel, right? And Facebook is not really increasing the amount of users at a large magnitude scale, but they are increasing the number of advertisers at the same time. So when you're going after the purchase pixel, you're basically now having your ads showing to a specific pool of people that will most likely convert in the purchase side, but it may be a little bit more expensive. However, it will still work, but this is what is happening right now. Um, so very great question. Someone's asking, what about the targeting? So the targeting actually doesn't get changed in the um, in this kind of scale. But what you need to really understand is how Facebook algorithm really, really works. And at the end of the day, what you need to be aware of is that, especially when you're increasing your budget, you will find a sweet spot. So let's say that if you were converting at $10 and you increased it to like, $20, you're still making money, but once you increase it to 100 and you start losing money, you want to revert it back into $20. This is like super, 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 super important stuff. Now, another thing that I really want to bring your guys' attention because I know some of you guys are an e-commerce owner and a Shopify owner, so give me a one in the question box if you are a, um, if you are a Shopify owner or you're basically running e-commerce. Just give me a one in the question box right now. Okay. I got a lot of people giving me a one. So when you're running a Shopify, right now, obviously, Shopify and Facebook works really, really closely together, and they already created an integration that basically have um, all you have to do is just put in your pixel ID, and then everything else will be taken care of, right? All the uh, view content, um, add to car, check out at payment info, and purchase will be taken care of. However, however, this is one thing that really affected my campaign, completely affected my campaign in a way that actually scared me. Um, I actually lost quite a lot of money, and I discovered this. So if you are actually collecting payments with PayPal or Amazon Payment, or even Apple Pay. So if you're not using Stripe payment or using the credit card functionality inside your Shopify account, you will have a very, very big B 
big, big discrepancy. All right. So I'm going to write this out for you guys to share with you what this means. So Sh Shopify owners. So because what happens right now, Facebook and Shopify did all the grunt work for you. They basically all you have to do is do the ID. But here's the problem that occurs when a user goes into your product. OK, so let's pretend this is a product. They bought the product. Obviously, the next page it is going to be your cart. Um, I'm trying to draw nice right now. So they go to your cart. And after the cart, it goes to basically the credit card page, right? The credit card page. I'm going to try to, try, try to draw a credit card. And then after the credit card page, what will happen is that they are then going into the purchase. Right. So obviously, this is something that everyone should know on how the funnel really looks like. But here's a big, big, big discovery that I found that will really affect your campaign and how you're going to be optimizing your campaign. So in Facebook, they will basically have something called the view content right here. That's place for you. They will have the add to cart. So I'm just going to say add to cart and then they will have initiate checkout. And then you will have basically purchase. But if you actually look into your account right between the initiate checkout and the purchase, and if you ever went through a Shopify sales funnel, <clears throat> you will see that there is a hidden page right here, and it is basically a loading page. This loading page actually triggers something called the ad payment info. And what this really happens is this. There's two things that's happening right now. <clears throat> when a person goes to actually put in their credit card and you have the option to accept either PayPal or Amazon payments, I'm trying to draw an A, what happens is that right then in the center, you are already moved outside of Shopify. You are in a different environment. You are now in PayPal's environment. You are also now in Amazon's environment. And what happens is that when the person actually says complete the order or when they actually click on um, the PayPal button or the Amazon button, the ad payment info actually got triggered. And when that got triggered, obviously, as you guys know, if you have a PayPal or Amazon account, you will actually go to a thank you page by PayPal and Amazon. And they would have to wait or click on a button in order to go into your purchase page, uh, into your purchase page with your purchase pixel. So the big problem that really happens right now is that when people obviously just leave at this side, you are not getting your purchase being triggered. And if that's the case, that means that you are not optimizing correctly. Okay, this this completely happened to my Shopify store. I spent three, four thousand dollars a day in just one of my Shopify store, and it has a tremendous impact. My purchase cost per purchase increased, and that was the basic um, KPI metric that I used to optimize my campaign. But I came to realize that the purchase Pixel firing has a big, big, big discrepancy because I accept PayPal and I accept Amazon payment at the same time. So what I found after a week of just data analysis is that if you're using your Shopify integration pixel with Facebook, you should be optimizing and making your judgment based on ad payment info. I actually found out that at the end, my ad payment info is 100% aligned with the number of sales that I'm getting from my Facebook advertising campaign inside my Shopify account. But at the end of the day, that doesn't mean that you should not be optimizing and setting your conversion be purchased. You still, over here... You still need to make sure that your conversion is going after purchase. 
And the reason why is that, again, like I explained earlier, Facebook has a specific segment of people that specifically really trigger the purchase event. So you advertise to people that are more likely to be buying and purchasing on your website because they have been buying and purchasing from other places as well. But when you are actually looking at your data and determining if you should pause a campaign or if you should increase your campaign um, in terms of budget, then you would really just want to make sure that you actually optimize based on ad payment info. Now, give me actually a two in the question box if you guys were following exactly what I was saying. Again, like I said earlier before this webinar, this is some really advanced stuff that I'm actually covering right now um, through all the data that I've been finding out and all those other stuff. So for any of you that actually kind of don't get it, it's fine. Again, I have this recorded. I hopefully won't lose the file. And I will send a replay about these out as soon as possible. And it is complicated. But if you're able to really understand how you really, how Facebook works, then it will be so much easier for you to really optimize your campaign properly and really understand what you should be doing on Facebook. All right. So going back to setting up the campaign. So then obviously in here, everything stays the same and you want to go after. Now, I always have a new habit right now is to go after everyone who lived in this location and I would only go after one country at a time. So anyone that is following me uh, for the longest time, you will know that I always go after these changes. And then I would actually always go after 25 plus. And my language would always be English all. So these are things that never got changed. So you don't have to worry about these right now. So the next thing that you really want to be aware of and that you really want to understand what is going on is the detail targeting. They made an adjustment in the detail targeting. I think it's actually a good adjustment. It's actually not bad at all. But here's one thing that you need to be aware of though, okay? So let's say that I'm going after uh, Bass Pro Shops. What happens right now is that Facebook will automatically expand your interest in your detailed targeting if there's a chance to reach more people that likely will convert. Now, if you are a complete micromanager like I am, I would actually turn this off because I want true data. I want exactly what is going on in my campaign. I want to, I don't want Facebook to reach more different targeting that I'm not aware of. So, but Facebook does this obviously because they want to really increase um, more money and uh, they make more money off of you and to really understand it. So for me, I personally switch this off, but you can test this yourself to really determine what is going on. All right. Now on top of all these, the next change, now I'm just going through the basic stuff, okay? I will be going advanced. I will be going back up here in a bit about some very important stuff in just a moment, but I'm just going down the uh, num um, the information right now. So um, then what you wanted to do is obviously in the placement, they made a big change in the placement. When you edit the placement, things look so much harder to actually work. You need to go really in depth. So like I keep teaching every single person, you need to make sure that you go after only mobile or desktop only, okay? So in this case scenario for mobile only, you may be thinking, well, I just have to sh turn these off and then it's gonna be good to go because obviously Instagram and audience network have a different kind of mentality in place. And a lot of people just skip this and go all the way down to finish up their campaign. Uh-uh, don't do that, okay? What you wanted to do is go Pacific mobile devices and operating system and go after Wi-Fi only. People in a Wi-Fi network will more likely to convert than on 3G because 3G people are obviously just going to be uh, killing time and they won't be really going through your sales funnel. But here's one big change that has happened. If you go after desktop only, you will automatically think that, okay, I'm only going after desktop and I can just create my campaign. That's no, no, because Facebook purposely hit this. They have actually hid 
this button over here. So if you don't know what you're doing and you just, just go out for desktop, you are now actually advertising in desktop newsfeed and right column. So you need to specifically click on this little toggle over here and remove right hand column. Right hand column will increase your frequency. Okay. Your frequency will be increased. Your cost will increase at the same time because the right hand column will only have two ads and you need to be very competitive to be at that realm. All right. Now, before I go into budget and scheduling, there's another very, very important thing that I want to cover in your audiences and your detail targeting. So I'm not sure if you guys are fully aware of what is really happening inside your accounts. So I'm going to ask this question first. How many of you have heard of something called an audience overlap in your account right now? Give me a one in the question box if you have heard of this. Okay, I've been here. I've been actually getting more ones than ever. That's great. You guys are knowing a lot more than I would expect. This is awesome. How many of you guys are actually implementing and trying to remove yourself from audience overlap? Give me a two because this is very important. Knowing one thing is important and actually applying it is another very important thing. All right, everyone's giving me a two right now. Okay, so here are the things that you need to be aware of and that you absolutely need to keep your eyes on when you are advertising your campaign. Regardless if you are new to advertising on Facebook or if you are a savvy advertiser, you still need to fully understand this. It's the audience overlap. All right. Now, what I mean by this audience overlap is I'm not going to talk about lookalike audience first. I'm just going to straight up talk about interest targeting. So let's say that right now you are advertising specifically, and in my case scenario, I'm just doing an example, going after Bass. What was the keyword? Let me see. Uh, it was Bass Pro Shops. All right. Bass Pro Shops. Right, So that's the targeting that we're going after. And we just set up an ad and let it run. If you just create this one asset, you are going to be fine. But obviously, we are an advertiser. We want to actually reach out to more people. And we really wanted to make sure that we actually get as much people as possible in our marketplace. So chances are that if I create Bass Pro Shop, then my next ad may be Cabela's, right? Because they are the same audience and I will set up a new campaign that's going to be basically Cabela's. So now what happens is that you have asset number one going after Bass Pro Shop. You have asset number two that is now going after Bass Pro Shop, oh, sorry, a Cabela's. Now, here's the problem that come into play. Chances are for the, the audiences to like or interest both Bass Pro Shops and Cabela is very, very high. And when that come into play, you will have an audience overlap right into the section. So basically, it depends on what the percentage is. Okay, It really depends on what the percentage is. So you need to actually use the audience insight and create it. I don't have enough time or leisure to do so today, but you want to use the audience insight to actually save the audience and then look at the audience overlap. Because what is going to be happening is that if you have an asset that goes after Bass Pro Shops, another asset going after Cabela's, what will happen is that you will have a percentage of people that you are competing yourself with. You are absolutely competing yourself with. If you start competing yourself, then your costs will actually go up because you're bidding against yourself. And this is super, super, super important. So what you need to be aware of, and yes, it is tedious. I hate it, but this is the best practice, okay? You want to, well, Facebook actually doesn't say it's the best practice, but if you want to actually minimize, um, maximize your profits, this is what you need to do. What you wanted to do is you want to then exclude people and exclude, so, okay, let's do this. 
you guys can actually watch this. Okay, I'm just going to go after mobile only right now. All right. And then right now, let's say people that are interested in Cabana, uh, Cabela's is 2.6 mil, right? Now let's look at this. If I exclude, now I haven't done this before. I'm just doing it as an example, Bass Pro Shops. If I exclude Bass Pro Shops, this number dropped to 1.2 mil. So what that means is that if I were to have people advertise an asset to Cabela's and Bass Pro Shop, I have over 50% audience overlap, 50% overlap. And what that means is that there is a 50% chance that my spend is actually battling with myself. And obviously when that happens, your cost goes up and your result isn't all the same. Now, obviously, if any of you are running a lookalike audience, you would always want to make sure that you exclude your lookalike audiences and you want to exclude. I don't have a lookalike audience on here. And you want to also exclude all your purchase customers because you only want to advertise to those people. So these are some very, very, very super, super, super important stuff. So I hope you guys are taking notes. I saw a lot of people are like, I'm lost. But yes. It is some really advanced stuff that I'm covering right now. So that's why I purposely, I just can't, I just have to do a webinar with you guys to share with you guys all of these. Now, here's one more thing that I want to really, really emphasize to you guys right now. Like super important, super, super important. Right now, when you're advertising on Facebook, when you're advertising online, your number one core, your number one core is always mobile first always mobile first and your strategy has to be mobile first there is actually more phones than laptops right now a lot more phones than laptop way more phones than laptop and in fact thanks to amazon people's buying behavior on phone they are more willing to put in their credit card information and thanks to Apple Wallet, thanks to Amazon Pay, thanks to uh, PayPal one-click purchase. All these are really helping the mobile market right now. So if any of you are not even considering mobile or have your everything based on mobile, you are put, you're shooting yourself in the foot right now. You're absolutely shooting yourself in the foot right now. So I just want to get a hands, like I want to get a feeling and understanding of you guys. Give me a three in the question box if you guys actually don't have a mobile strategy in place. Give me a three in the question box if you absolutely don't have. Wow, I'm almost getting like every single person give me a three right now that you guys are not having a mobile strategy in place. I can tell you by making a several small adjustments, you can actually start making a lot more money and you're leaving a lot of money on the table right now if you don't have a mobile strategy in place. So um, I actually have a webinar, a brand new webinar next week about mobile madness strategies. So how many of you would actually love to join that section to learn more about mobile now? Just give me a one in the question box right now if you guys want to do that. All right. Okay. So at the end, remind me to send you guys a link um, to join that workshop so you guys can actually learn um, a lot more about mobile because, guys, I can tell you. Mobile is going to be the staple of any businesses in the next five years. It's always going to be mobile. It will be mobile. In fact, desktop is going to lose even more market share. I was talking to Google the other day, and they even told me, so yeah, um, all their desktop traffic has an all-time low right now. And mobile is really shooting through the freaking roof. So if you don't have a mobile strategy in place, you are leaving a lot of money on the table, like a lot of money on the table. All right, so moving back into Facebook. Now, the next thing that I really want to share with you and an update that Facebook has created is their budget. You'll be surprised on what they have, do, what they have done with the budget. So previously, what Facebook does is that every single Facebook rep that I worked with, they always asked me, they always basically said to me, Fred, don't go after daily budgets. You should start thinking about and going after um, lifetime budget. 
And I flat out asked them and questioned them, why would I want to do that when I know that if I do a daily budget, I'll be making money. Well, what happens is that if you run a lifetime budget, what will happen is it will look at Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then Facebook will allocate your budget, okay, and actually maybe spend money here, um, spend little money here, spend more money here, spend money here. So they would actually allocate your budget throughout the day of the week. And when that happens, basically you might actually spend, let's say, uh, $20 on Sunday. And then on Monday, you might spend $10 because it's not working well for you. And then Tuesday tends to do well for you. And Facebook will allocate your budget more to Tuesday, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what was previously Facebook wanting everyone to do. But because every single advertiser doesn't listen to them, and <laughs> obviously funny enough. So now what they do, if you actually watch close attention to your account, and if you actually spend like around um, more than 100 bucks a day per asset, what it will happen is that Facebook, even though you put in a daily budget, it will allocate your daily budget based on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, right now. So you may actually have some days that you're hitting your budget. Some days you are not hitting your budget. Sometimes you're spending more than your budget. Sometimes you're not hitting your budget. This is absolutely normal. Facebook is trying to really use their algorithm to help you allocate your budget properly. This is something that you cannot control. Something that nothing you can do about it. But I just want to explain to you what is really happening inside the budget change right now. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is basically the conversion window. A lot of people ask me about the conversion window, um, if they should go after one day or seven days. Please stay at one day. You want immediate ROI. You don't want a long-term ROI unless if you have a lot of money to burn, a lot of money to spend, yes, you can actually go after seven days. But I do not recommend it at your next stage. Even I'm not using it because what I wanted to do is I want my pixel to fire back within one day, not in seven days. I don't want seven days data. I want Facebook to optimize on the same day. So when a person click on the ad and within 24 hours, they make a sale. I only want to go after those people. Okay. And this is something that you really, really need to be aware of. All right. Now I'm just going to click continue. I shared a lot of stuff right here. I'm just going to click continue. And now you can see that they change up some of the stuff right here. So what I have to really say, um, and oddly enough, I do have to say this. Video is working super well right now. Superbly well. However, here's one thing that I need to, you guys to be aware of. Two, uh, I think it was three weeks ago, Facebook got called out. They actually inflated the number of video views on a video. They said that it's not affected any advertisers, but no one knows. However, even though they had a bad press about their videos, videos right now is doing very, very, very well. Especially if you have a video that is combined with website conversions, it is absolutely doing, doing really, really, really well. Now, Facebook knows that video is doing well, so that's why they have now introduced Slideshow. Slideshow is basically for you to create like a slideshow of seven different images and letting it run. And on Facebook, if you are running through the news feed and you have something moving, obviously that really grabs your attention. And that's why video ads are working well right now along with Slideshow. Now, I'm not saying that single image or carousel ads is not working. They are still working. But you just need to really have a different strategy in place because of these reasons. First of all, let me make this really, really clear. When you start running your single image and your single image starts to convert really, really well, but your frequency starts to increase, okay? Your frequency starts to increase and then your campaign after, let's say, let's say you ran for like a month. It was working well. And then a month later, it starts to suck. Okay, it starts to actually not convert for you. Now, what you should do is you should not actually just 
forget about the targeting. What you wanted to do is take the same targeting and run a video ad. What it will do is that you now have a new creative and it refreshes the market. The market right now. That's what it does. It simply just refreshes the market. Because now, if you look at your click-through rate, your click-through rate is going to be hovering. Your best, your, what your goal is, one of your KPI metrics should be your link click click-through rate should be at 3%. So basically, let's say that if you are going after your image ad and you had, let's say, a million reach for your ad. And at 3%, you are basically only having, what, 1 million divided by 3%. You only have like 1, um, 100,000, not 100,000. Okay, I suck at math when it comes to like big numbers. So bear with me. A oh, million multiplied by 0.3. You really have 30,000 people that really actually went to your website. So you're missing out 97% of your market. It doesn't mean that the 97% is not your customers that you can actually convert. It's just that the creative did not really speak to them. So when that happens, you should clone the same targeting but a creative, which is a video creative, and tap into the remaining 97%. All right, these are things that you need to really um, be aware of and to really understand. So with that, obviously, all these are really left the same. Nothing has changed. I'm not going to go in details about these because uh, you guys all know about it. All right. Now, there is one thing that I kind of wanted to bring up is lead ads. All right. I am actually going to go change this objective back to lead ads and share with you guys the new way of setting up a new lead ad. Okay. So I'm just going to go after whatever targeting. I'm just going to the. I'm not going to go into in depth about these because we talked about it. I'm just setting up a campaign to show you guys. Okay. It's forcing me to do something. Um. What are you trying to do, Facebook? Why can't I continue? Can't run until you're... Oh, psh. Hate that. Okay, I accept. There you go. Okay, I'm going to continue. All right. So now, again, with lead ads, you can still use single image, video, or slide show. All of these are absolutely fine right now. But when you're creating your lead ad, obviously all these are going to be the same. And I'm just going to be randomly typing stuff on here right now. So you guys can actually see what I'm doing. So sign up for uh, get 50% off our next purchase. I'm just randomly st writing stuff right now. Okay. Um, um, uh, sign up our newsletter and receive a 50% coupon, discounted coupon to our entire collections of um, outdoor gears. All right, and then obviously you wanna put text here. I'm just gonna randomly put here, uh, just click the sign up button. And there's other things that's been doing. You can actually do these crazy special characters. Facebook is actually completely fine with these right now. All right. Um, then what you want to do is obviously link www.preppergears.com. And you want to click track all conversions. So you obviously you want to see if you're actually getting sales from it. Now the lead form got changed. So you actually actually have to create the lead form over here. And obviously you can create a new lead form and you name your lead form. I'm just gonna do Fred demo. And you can have basically, um, you can include organic leads at the same time. Obviously that's what you want. And when you click on next, you are going to be asked to create a context card. I have not getting good results with context card. So I usually do not now but it's up to you. I just don't do it because you're adding an extra layer on top of people that are opting in into your email list. And then full name, email, and then press next. And then obviously you have to put in your link text right here. Um, 
you would want to say privacy. And then here, well, you don't really have to put privacy. You can just put your URL link, www.preppergears.com forward slash uh, privacy. And then you can add a custom disclaimer if you want, but I don't suggest that again because it is, asked, uh, it is adding another piece of layer again. And then press next. This is basically your website or your landing page that you want to go to. Press next and you're basically going to be done. So the you nothing really got changed. It's just the UI, okay? The user interface got changed. So these are the stuff that you need to really be aware of and that you need to fully understand. But all in all, everything really stayed the same. But the only difference is that it will no longer have, you basically don't have the privilege of doing this through the Power Editor anymore. You have to use this new UI to create your lead form, okay? And again, Facebook will optimize these all based on lead form, okay? Very, very, very important stuff. So I'm just gonna press, okay. So basically there's not a big change, it's just how you create your ads is the big change for your lead ads. And that's what it is all about. So obviously then I would just play, do place order and just link it with leads tunnel or hyper leads and then it is good to go. So that's really what is happening inside Facebook. Now there's also one very important thing that you guys need to be aware of, okay? There's one thing that you guys need to be aware of. I hate to say it, but you just have to be aware of it. Right now, Facebook and our marketplace is entering into quarter four, okay? Quarter four, Q4 is proven to be the best. And what I mean by that is that people buy a lot of stuff from um, September all the way to December. People buy a lot of stuff. This is like people's buying behavior right now because it's starting to get to the holiday very soon. Um, kids are back to school. People are willing to spend money. And there's Black Fridays coming up, etc., etc., etc. This is the perfect time for you, for any e-commerce people to actually run your store right now because people are ready to buy stuff online right now. But there's one thing that you need to keep in mind. Because of the amount of advertisers right now in the marketplace and everyone is going after the purchase pixel, right? Everyone is, all the advertisers are now going after the purchase pixel. What is happening is that your costs are really going up nowadays for the next couple of months it won't be decreased until the earlier next uh earlier next year because right now everyone is in shopping mode and everyone is starting to rick up their ad spend so you will see that your cost per click and your cpm will be basically going up right now so you really need to make sure that you keep your kpi metrics in place and make sure you watch it like a hawk and have your roi in place for your advertising campaign. This is a very important tip to give you um, because obviously it's not that your campaign is not working. It's just that your cost may be going up all because of the um, shopping trend that is happening right now and everyone is really buying right now. So a lot of people are asking like, what is KPI and all this other stuff? Obviously I don't have um, the leisure to really share every single one of these for uh, every single detail um, for you guys right now. And I actually have all these covered inside something called iPro Lab. Um, and iPro Lab has a lot of these crazy stuff in place. But obviously, um, for those, it's only for people that have signed up. So if you basically sign up for iPro Lab, you will get all these crazy updates. All right. So give me a one in the question box right now if you guys are really blown away about this webinar. Like, I just want to get a feeling of it. Because, holy crap, I have to tell you guys, I uh, for the past several weeks, I've been trying to really dissect all these Facebook new changes. And it's actually pretty crazy stuff. Um, it's good that I was able to discover it at the end of the day. And there's still a lot of people that's not knowing what is going on. Um, even some of the top uh, 
Facebook people are like not Facebook people. Even like Facebook sometimes says like, "Whoa, you you know so much more than we do." Like the specialists, they're like, "Wow, you know so much more than I do." It's really because I just know what is going on right now, and I know what is going on in the market right now. So, wow. Okay, everyone's loving this golden nuggets. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Now I am seeing. One question that keeps coming up a lot,、um, and obviously I just want to get your guys' consent about it because I said this is a no pitch webinar, but a lot of people are asking me、um, about iPro Lab right now. How many of you want me to talk a little bit about iPro Lab right now? Because I see that a lot of people are asking me. So if you want me to talk about iPro Lab a little bit, give me a one in the question box right now. And、um, obviously I'm not pitching you guys on it. I said that this is a no pitch webinar,、um, and I'm only talking about iPro Lab. Holy crap! I'm getting a tons of one right now,、uh, a tons of ones right now. So,、um, at the end of the day, what iPro Lab is, it is a. If you guys actually go to、um, www.iproacademy.com/forward/slash/join/iprolab, you can basically have. Oops. Slash I Pro Lab. My bad. Ah,、huh, I lost the link. Lab dot I Pro Academy dot com. See, I, I I'm not even prepared to actually sell you guys anything on this webinar at all because I don't even remember my link. So I have something called I Pro Lab. It is a、uh, monthly membership where you can actually start it for just a dollar, a dollar trial, fourteen days for free. So what you're gonna get is that、um, every two weeks I release a brand new training, and it's not just restricted to Facebook. It is everything that you need to know about online advertising. And every single Wednesday, I have this kind of webinar, like this kind of exact structure webinar, where I teach a topic every single week, followed by a full Q and A section, and then I have a private community access where people can get access to me. And ask questions where I answer, and we also have a quarterly meetup where、um, I book a place、um, in Vancouver, and then you guys can come in, and I'm going to really consult for your business, etc., etc.、Um, and again, you start this by just a dollar for 14 days. Every week we have it, so、um, that's what we have. And then all you have to do every single month is just basically buy me dinner for $47 a month. But you're going to be entitled for four webinars. And、um, a new module every two weeks, and you're gonna learn not just the stuff that you learned today, but a lot more other stuff, like a ton of stuff right now. So any of you that are interested and want to find out or join, I'm just gonna drop the link in the question box right now, so you guys can actually see it. Again, it's up to you. I'm not pitching you guys at all. So I'm just moving out because I got a lot of people asking me about it right now. So now, last but not least. I remembered before I actually go.、Um, next week, obviously, you guys all love these kind of webinars.、Um, so, what's going to happen next week is that I am having a mobile madness webinar. So, it's going to be all about mobile. It's going to be basically learning tips and tricks on how you can actually maximize your sales for mobile. And here is the join link. I actually put it right into the question box. So give me a one in the question box if you guys can see it. I just want to make sure that you guys receive it because I promise that、um, I'm giving it out right now. All right, excellent. So next week, what's happening is that we are going to talk about mobile madness. It's crazy right now. Like the amount of money that's in mobile right now. Um, it's absolutely crazy. I would have to tell you this year alone, um, eighty percent of my ad budget is all mobile right now, and eighty percent of all my sales are coming from mobile right now. That's actually pretty freaky because two years ago, eighty percent of my sales are actually coming from a laptop. Now it's actually come. It's all from mobile. If I did not make adjustments on my website, if I did not have a mobile strategy in place, holy crap, I would have my business lost right now. Because desktop obviously really went haywire right now. They completely dropped right now to an all-time low. So if you are really wanting to make sure that you basically,、um, I actually shared the link already.、Um, you guys should see it in your question box.、Um, 
it's a go to webinar link. So I'm not sure if you guys can actually see it. It's a very long link. So I will be sending out an email about this just to make sure. But anyone that wants to save your seat right away, um, this is the link over here. I'm dropping it down into the questions box, questions box again so you guys can see it. So please be sure to register because um, mobile is something that you should absolutely, absolutely, absolutely not ignore. You should really focus on that and moving from there. All right. So how many of you guys are really happy right now and have I put a smile on your face? Give me a two in the question box if you guys are here. I put a smile on your face because that's what I care about. Like this webinar, I, I purposely did it for you. I just want you guys that to know that I'm always here to help you guys out and I'm always here to look out on your behalf. Um, sometimes I do have to say, um, I don't really send out as much emails. As you guys can see, I'm really different um, than other people that are uh, sending you emails like almost every day. I just don't send out every day only because the fact that, um, I don't know, I just feel like I don't want to flood your inbox. But I do email you guys here and there. And obviously with that, um, I just want to make sure that you guys are still um, engaged with me and still know uh, that I exist, obviously, that I'm just really busy in the back end figuring all these crazy stuff out so I can actually do these kind of webinar and share all these details with you. And that's what I'm here about. So I see a lot of people saying thank you and and super happy about it. That's great. And I'm really happy to have you guys here. We have a lot of people that showed up. Um, we almost we almost hit max capacity. So guys, again, just remember <laughs> Teresa said, how could we forget Fred? Which is great. Thank you. I actually like all these kind of comment because it actually motivates me a lot. Um, when I see a lot of people joining these kind of training and when a lot of you guys are actually here um really spending time to understand and to really perfect your business because you guys are going to be ones that are very different from other people i do have to say this um and i'm just doing some personal development stuff and let you guys know that you guys really set up an hour of your time just to be here and this means a lot to me and it also means a lot to yourself and you owe it to yourself a lot of people just sign up for webinars and not be there live, and they just don't implement. They just don't feel like they should be joining webinars to learn and adapt to all these changes. And those are the people that are going to get left behind because they don't even want to spend time. They'd rather go into watch TV. They want to really go um, into knowing um, all these other stuff. And at the end of the day, they just simply don't want to really succeed online. They just really blame other stuff and all those other stuff. So anyways, with that, thank you for really being here because you owe it to yourself. And um, you guys, your success is really all about you guys. And if you really want to succeed, you would basically really want to make sure that you guys really show up to these training, show that you're implementing because people like me, not just me, People that you guys go webinars with, like I would say um, Anthony Morrison, like Onyx and Gall, um, Jimmy Kim, all those other people. You know what? It means a lot to us when we see you guys being happy, you guys are learning, you guys are implementing, and you guys are getting success. Because that's what, at the end of the day, that's what we all care about. We care about you guys, and that's what I'm here for. But obviously, again, I am sometimes MIA only because I just get so um so focused on really dissecting data and really knowing what is going on in the advertising world so i don't always keep in touch but again at the end of the day you guys owe it to yourself and for just showing up with these webinar and taking notes the more you guys do these the better you're off going to be and the more that you will actually succeed online because let's be honest um at the end of the day people don't even know what is going on no i didn't say that i teach adrian morrison we actually mastermind a lot though. Um, I don't teach him. We just mastermind a lot together. I'm just saying like people like Anthony Morrison and Onyx and Gold that teaches their students, like some of you guys, maybe their students, like that's what we care about is you guys succeeding and you guys really showing up to these webinar, motivated, really ready to learn all these other stuff. And I do have to say one, 
really important thing. You guys in the online world, it's a really different environment than nine to five jobs in a retail environment. You always need to be stay up to date on the latest trend and the latest training because without that, um, because without that, you would absolutely not be able to succeed. You will be left behind. The internet world changes so fast and you just have to adapt to it. And that's why I'm doing all these webinars for you guys to really show you guys, hey, these are the changes. Work on it. And I really want to say in a way where you guys can say, yeah, Fred, thank you for saving my butt because um, that one tip really helped me in my business and saved me from my business. So you need to understand that these trainings aren't important. And um, again, you owe it to yourself. And I will be doing more training as much as I can um, so you guys can actually learn a lot more. All right. So anyways, that's really it on my end. Just some really personal talk. I don't think I really done a lot of personal talk with you guys before. It's all about like training, 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 training. But I just want to see, show you guys the soft side of me. And I hope you guys appreciate that. And like that's because some people just say like, I don't care about that. But anyways, I see a lot of positive response. So that's all I really have. Um, and I'll see a lot of questions. And again, I will get a replay up as soon as possible. So once that replay is ready, I will, hopefully I don't lose the file. Um, I will definitely um, put it, upload it somewhere where you guys can see it. And then um, you guys can actually review it. This is a very important one because you guys really need to know exactly what is going on um, right behind um, the scene with Facebook. Because the more you know, the better you're off going to be. And with that, at the end of the day, that's what things are going to be all about. All right. So that's it for today. I will be sending you guys a replay. And if there's anything else, please watch out for my emails. Have a great and wonderful day. I will talk to you guys very, very soon. Bye now.